How can you tell if your avoidant X will come back? This is what we will cover today in this video. I am a former avoidant. Also as a therapist, I will help you understand the psychological drivers because it's very hard to understand an avoidant person, right? It's very hard to also adapt your approach, adapt your communication if you want to repair and build a relationship with that person. So I'll explain everything after the jingle. I get my X back dot com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So what are the characteristics of avoidant, especially in the context of a breakup? Avoidant people are scared of love. The idea is that, yes, they want to be in love. They want to love some, someone because being attached to someone is a primary need. But it's scary because being in love is being vulnerable. Being in love is intimacy. Being in love is being committed. And this is scary because in the construct of someone who has an avoidance attachment style, those things prevent them from being free, from doing what they want, from being self-reliant and independent, you know, which is really at the core of their personalities. So as a former avoidant, it was very hard for me to fight <laughs> and accept that in order for me to build sustainable and healthy relationship, I had to let go of this construct, right? And so in the context of a breakup, when they get back, they're always very hesitant, very timid, because the relationship is scary. In most cases, getting back with someone is not about the feelings, it's about the fear. And here, your ex, who's avoidant, is scared. So it's about creating that safe space. And that's why it's important to adopt different strategy than if you were dealing with someone secure, anxious, because it's completely different to handle those dynamic if your partner or ex is avoidant. And understand again, it's really about their idea of safety. Is it safe for me to re-enter this relationship, right? So they will gradually test the water, right? There's usually this, I'm gonna give it a try, I'm gonna psychologically think about the relationship and then the emotions will follow. If you're anxious, it's usually the other way around. The emotions first and then the rational or the, the psychological driver after, right? And so the problem that you have to face is that their behaviors will reflect this on and off, this hot and cold type of behavior. And it's really hard to manage because you know what you want, you know what you are able to give, you want to give, but you can't because they are going back and forth. And sometimes we want to give up. Sometimes we feel like, why am I wasting time <laughs> trying to repair this relationship? And a lot of comments that I see on my videos is people telling like, you know, you're wasting your time. Don't try to get back with them, etc., etc. Sometimes you're wasting your time. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's, especially if you've been together for a few years, you know, you have every right to try to repair, to try to rescue this relationship that was different, that was meaningful. First thing, the first step is the, the physical return or the, the st testing zone, I would say. So your ex will, at some stage, initiate. It will be very su subtle, very small. I don't see any avoidant come buying back with, a, you know, flowers or with big declaration or letter. It's very subtle. It's tentative, it's cautious. They'll send you a little thing on social media, a little text. Don't expect too much. And very often we feel like, you know, after all we had, this is what he or she sends me. What does it mean? It just means that they're scared, okay? They are scared of being rejected. Let's say they took the decision to end the relationship. They know you got hurt. They know because of their decision, you suffered a lot. Right now, they want to get back together or they have this idea or they miss you. Let's put it this way. But they're not necessarily sure they want to get back with you. So what they do is they just test the water and assess whether it's safe. 
understand that from their point of view, they're not sure whether they're gonna get, the, whether they're gonna get back with you because they need to feel safe first, right? Maybe you, at this stage, watching my video, you're thinking like, I'm 100% sure I wanna get back together, which is, by the way, a wrong approach of looking at things. You shouldn't be 100% you wanna get back together because um, maybe I digress on the, <laughs> the slides that I've made, but it's important for you if you want to manage this breakup properly and learn from it to also assess the limitation of the relationship. Right now, you want to repair, you want to fix, you want to come back together, fair enough, but you have to understand that you cannot get back to the same old relationship. Otherwise, you'll end up breaking up, you'll end up suffering from that. Now, there's an important reminder when I say those things, if your partner is reaching out, if your partner is liking your stories or whatever, that doesn't guarantee their desire to reconcile or to get back together. It's just one sign. The, what you have to understand is the the intent um, may vary. You know, it could be about testing their ego. Maybe they are missing out on the relationship. It's very hard to assess. And it's very important to, to manage your expectations. As I said before, maybe you're 100% sure you want to get back together, but understand that you don't know their intentions. You have to go day by day and assess day by day. Um, yes, it's a positive sign, but that doesn't mean that it's game on and that you're going to get back together. Usually when I start working with my clients, we are at that stage. They are got back in touch. They have conversation. It's very subtle. It's very... But that doesn't guarantee that they're going to get back together. My job is to, it's kind of a risk risk management thing. My job is to help my clients not to mess up. If you are meant to be together, you get back together. Let's put it this way. The problem is that most people, because of their emotional reaction, because they're anxious, um, because they don't read the signs, because they don't manage, they, they can't really have effective communication to be secure with their partner, they are preventing themselves from making it work. They are just doing the same old things, the old patterns. So the whole point for me is to help you move away from those negative, not necessarily toxic, but negative patterns. Just be yourself, but knowing a little bit more about emotional regulation, effective communication and so on. So your partner feels safe. And if they feel safe, you'll get back together it's going to be easier and your relationship will be way stronger than when you uh, broke up. So it's very important to, to understand this. Now, after that, there's an observation phase. So your avoidant, avoidant person, your avoidant ex will observe whether you're happy, whether you, you're in a relationship. The same sort of thinking or thoughts that you had after a breakup. The thing is, obviously, there's a timing difference after a breakup when someone breaks up with us we're obsessed about are they going to meet someone are they happy are they depressed etc for an avoidant they don't think like this right away they need to process the breakup and it takes way longer than for a secure person and they will check for your emotional state and assess again is it safe will you confront them will you be too emotional will you send them long text, letters, right? Things that they'll feel um, pressured, smothered, etc., etc. And that could include social media activity. Now on social media activity, don't overanalyze text messages, not text messages, but don't overanalyze likes and views on stories, etc. They are one type of science, but that's not enough. What you really want to assess is the messaging, is the tone, is the conversation. Signs on social media is very subtle, it's too sort of, it's very hard to draw any conclusion from that. Then the second step is increased in signal. So obviously the conversation increases the intensity. You have more frequent interaction, uh, more likes, more messages, etc., etc. And they assess. So see it as a journey, a sort of a ladder or steps. They start very, you know, very cautious and they need to climb slowly um, every single week, feeling more confident, feeling they can open up, etc., etc. And they assess your reaction. So also look at it as some form of assessment. When they send a message, 
unconsciously they have an expectation that you might pressure them that you might overwhelm them and so the more respectful you are of their space um, independence the more sort of secure you are in your communication the best your chances of getting back together because they will perceive like ah i don't feel the same way as i felt when we broke up then you have longer interactions obviously and i think this is where uh, you start having phone calls plans to meet up the first two steps are really just like building blocks the and people think like oh yeah the first messages are really important. They are not necessarily important. What's important is when you see each other. That's really the game changer. Um, but again, they will be very cautious. Um, they will probably, and sometimes it happens, would withdraw, right? You will see them one day and they would disappear. Again, this on and off is very frequent. That doesn't mean that it's not working. It means that their internal uh, processing, the way they process things, the way they process love, intimacy, they have this internal battle and these internal battles will mirror in their behaviors. And that's why sometimes we feel like, you know, it's always on and off. If it's always on and off and you don't see any changes and you don't see any progress, you're wasting your time. Don't get me wrong. The point is not to help you get back with someone and having sort of miserable relationship because you're on and off. You don't know what to think. You don't know what to, what your partner thinks. You don't know whether there's any future. This phase, those, the relationship recovery is something temporary, right? The point is to navigate this space so you get a clear answer of whether this person has potential. Our relationship has potential. You know, most of the time there is potential, especially if you've been together for many years and you have something special. Avoidance can love, right? They only suppress this need for love and being in, in an intimate relationship. So you, the question is, how can you bring them on that journey? And part of it is also depends on their ability to change and grow. Don't get me wrong. So right now you're watching the videos, you're trying to adapt your communication, you're doing what it takes, right? Also accept that some of it depends also on them. You're just creating the space, you're just creating the conditions for this to work. Understand as well that it's not, it's not only about you, right? It's 50-50. Sometimes it's more 60% for your ex and 40% for you. The fourth step is the desire to reconnect. So as I said, it's really about um, seeing each other. What people want is not to text each other. They don't want to hear about your feelings or... No, no, they want to see you, right? And they only want to see you if the previous steps went well, right? See it as like some sort of a test. Again, is it safe? Is it safe if we continue? Is it safe if we progress things? Okay. It's also understand that you need to let them speak freely. If you think about your relationship, you think about the breakup, you probably talk, talked more than him or her. So this time it's really a question of, okay, the floor is yours. I'm all ears. I'm not here to confront you. I'm not here to find solutions or to relate or to discuss about my internal feelings. I want to listen to you. And I will just listen active listening and just let's listen and try to understand their point of view. Also, the reason I'm making those videos and the reason I'm sharing my experience as an avoidant is that you can understand that no, they're not manipulative. No, they're not doing it to make you suffer. That's just the way. That's just their sort of working models. That's how we call it in attachment uh, therapy. And so that's the way they see things. That's basically the, the results of the stories there they are telling themselves. So the point for you is to understand those stories and figure out whether the person you're trying to build a relationship with has the ability to change those stories, has the ability to meet you halfway. So the thing is when you are in an anxious avoidant dynamic, as we trigger each other, it needs to start somewhere. So one needs to be secure. Okay, and studies have shown that if you are in a secure, insecure dynamic, if one of the two is secure, you have exactly the same relationship satisfaction than two secure people. So if it starts with you, it starts with you. You're doing the work, that's perfect, right? Also assess whether this person is willing to do a bit of effort as well.
Now, ambivalence. So avoidant personalities, they always have this ambivalence, this conflict between closeness and fearing it. I want to spend time with you. And that's why it's very confusing because usually at the beginning of this relationship, they would have said very nice things. They would be very attentionate, very generous, giving you um, attention, gifts, whatever, showing you with love. And then one year, two years after um, you started to date, things start to be different because they are scared of intimacy. And so they struggle with this fear of love, fear of rejection, and this push-pull dynamic that, and as I discussed, it is very draining emotionally. Now, if you're in that situation, and I forgot to mention that, and you want to know whether you're wasting your time, because sometimes you could be wasting your time, or whether you want to know if you should go no contact, if you, I don't know, if your partner is avoidant, or maybe if you want to have practical ways for you to be secure or have effective communication, give me a call. I have uh, have now decided to release a handful of uh, 15 minute calls um, because I know you're if you're watching my videos and you've been following me. Those tips are helpful. Sometimes you learn a lot, you feel empowered, but sometimes you feel like okay, yes, but <laughs> my situation is quite unique, and I'd love to discuss this to get an idea. Obviously, in 15 minutes, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to solve all your problems, but I would give you some. Um, insights and things to to think of um, and decide whether you know you need to see someone a therapist myself or or whether you know you're on track and you can do it on on your own or whether you're just wasting your time sometimes we in those calls not a lot obviously, obviously and luckily but sometimes I tell people they want to hear that you know you're wasting your time sometimes we we are sort of fixated on something everybody tells us it's a bad thing Right? And we don't want to hear those friends. We don't want to hear those people. And sometimes, you know, people feel the need to call me so I can tell them the truth. And I will tell you, you know, I'm not here to pretend that if you do this and that, he or she will come back. If you do this formula or buy this stuff, that's not how it works. If I clearly see that, you know, your better option is to move on and accept that this breakup is definitive, I will let you know. Hopefully, that's not what I will tell you. But if you feel the need, if you're puzzled, um, have a look and I'll be more than happy to chat with you. I love having those calls because sometimes this job is a bit lonely speaking <laughs> in my kitchen. And, and at the moment, um, I, I want to get more more people because I have few uh, few clients at the moment uh, that I love taking care of with, but I, I also love to get to know and meet new people as well. Now, obviously, there are common patterns when you date an avoidant person. Um, could have multiple breakups and reconciliation. So perhaps you broke up with that person many times already. The question is, okay, but this time, what is different? What can you do differently? Right? Again, if it happened in the past and nothing changes, you're doing the work, but he or she doesn't change, you're wasting your time. Um, so again, this on and off is not, you know, I don't wish anyone having this on and off relationship. That's not healthy, that's not what we want, that's not what we want to build, that's not what you deserve, right? So it's a question of assessing whether this has a potential and not only has the potential because sometimes people are in love with the potential, but seeing s clear signs that that person, that the relationship is now different, right? Because if you end up in those situations, you'll be emotionally drained, you'll be depressed, you'll be sad, you know, you'll be very excited one week and then the next two or three weeks really 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 depressed um, if you have any stories or things that you want to share about that let me know in the comment section i would love to also get my comment section as something where we can discuss and share each other's story because i know it's very helpful when you are dealing with a situation to see the people also having the same situation and also um, i can use that to help you and answer any questions that you have Questions to consider, and it's very important. Reflect on whether the avoidant, whether your partner has changed. It doesn't matter if your partner is avoidant. What matters is that person is willing to do the work or not. If he or she feels there's nothing wrong with him or her, you are wasting your time. If they don't regret anything, if they feel like, you know, fearing intimacy, being overly independent, not 
you know, being emotional with their partner is okay. You're wasting your time. I see it as um, a spectrum. And the problem is not being to the extreme, is having the ability to try to find your way towards secure attachment style. And in a way, I strongly believe that no one is really, really secure. The difference between someone secure and someone with insecure attachment style is that secure people will tend to repair more quickly. So it's just a question of, you know, you will always date someone who's more avoidant than you if you're anxious. You have to evaluate when you re-engage, thinking about the relationship as it is, than the potential, right? A lot of people, after a breakup, they feel like, yes, but there's so much potential. I know we could, the other day I had a, a chat with, with a lady and she was telling me like, it's such a pity because I know we could be happy. I know he's a great guy. I know what I can bring. And I know I can see that we can be happy. Her story was very particular, but throughout the years together, they never experienced this potential. So this potential has no meaning if it doesn't translate to something real, right? So it's important, especially when you're in love, when you have a lot of emotions involved in the process to make a difference between the potential and what you get, how he or she treats you. And be critical, be very critical. It's not because that they broke up with you that you can accept everything. It's not because they decided to end the relationship that you should be the one saying yes, Amen to whatever they say or do. This is also your time to reestablish and um, reestablish boundaries and new terms for this relationship. So it's very important to understand this. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and having a chat with you. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.